All right, case uh, seven. A uh, 65-year-old woman with a petechial eruption. This is a little trickier, I think. But let's see how you guys do. We didn't really see much other than the hemorrhage in the dermis in this one um, and solar elastosis, so like actinic purpura or like a benign pigmented purpura. Um, but we didn't see much else beyond that. Okay. Yeah, this one is a bit more subtle. Let's see where I think this is the best piece. So the petechial part of the eruption is perfectly explained, as you said, by the fact that there's a erythrocytes here. There's hemorrhage. But it's hemorrhage without inflammation, really, to speak of. You know, a few lymphocytes over here. But really, the vessels here are leaking blood, but they don't seem damaged at all otherwise, right? They don't have uh, vasculitis. They don't even really have reactive endothelial change. They don't have inflammation around them. So you can see this in solar purpura, right? The large uh, purpuric areas that you get in the older people's sun-damaged skin, like on their forearms. You can see this um, in other settings, like uh, thrombocytopenia, too. And that's actually what was the situation here. So petechia from any sort of cause that's non-vasculitic and non-inflammatory is just going to look like this. Blood in the superficial dermis. And sometimes you'll see blood in the dermis and on a slide and you'll wonder, is it is it real? I mean, of course, it's real blood if it's erythrocytes, but you'll wonder, is this hemorrhage that happened in the patient, true hemorrhage in vivo, or is it a side effect of the biopsy and blood spilling at the time of the procedure? And one thing that helps me, um, obviously, the clinical history, if it looked purpuric or violaceous or, or petechial, then probably the blood's real, right? But in addition to that, one pattern that helps me is this. Scattered erythrocytes in the superficial dermis, kind of individual scattered ones in between the elastosis or in between the, the dermal collagen bundles, I find that that pattern usually means real in vivo hemorrhage in the patient. If you see big pools of blood down in the deep reticular dermis and there's no, no reaction to it and no hemocytorin, then that probably is just procedural um, hemorrhage that's not really uh, true. So that, that's one helpful thing, okay? So they did have low platelets, I'll tell you that. So the other thing I think that stands out to me is the epidermis doesn't look totally normal here. It's acanthotic, right, it's thick. It's kind of glassy. I think that the basal layer looks, there's a bit of atypia, kind of jumbled, disorganized basal layer. So to me, you could think this could be a actinic keratosis up here, maybe just incidental. I mean, they got plenty of sun damage, right? But there's also a couple other things going on. In addition to this kind of glassy, disorganized, and large keratinocytes, I mean, there's not much parakeratosis. And usually actinic keratosis has parakeratosis to go with it, although not always. That's not a hard, fast rule. But this kind of jumbled disorganization is, is kind of weird. The other thing is, what's going on? What's going on here? What is this structure? I'll show you another angle. What is this structure? Oh, is that the eccrine duct? Yeah, it's the eccrine duct kind of spiraling its way up to join into the epidermis. And you can actually see barely, but there's the little, that's where the lumen of the duct is. That would probably be the other lumen here. And here, this is just, it's spiraling a little. And so we're just cutting down through it and we can just barely see uh, several cross sections of the duct. So this is, there's, there's the, the lumen of the duct right there. Yeah, so this is basically the acrosyringium, right, where the eccrine uh, duct joins up to the epidermis. But the normal acrosyringium does not look like this, right? It looks like normal, it should look like a normal double-layer cuboidal epithelium like you see in an eccrine duct, right? But here it's much more like big, glassy keratinocytes, right? Kind of looks like keratinocytes, like it looks like the, epi epi uh, the epidermis, right? Not like a sweat duct. So it's kind of become squamatized. Same thing here. There's also some dying keratinocytes here too. There's individual like apoptotic cells. So the eccrine, the eccrine ducts, look, that one's unhappy. This one's unhappy. This, there's a duct you can see. There's the lumen of the duct. This one's unhappy. So when we see this finding of enlargement and kind of uh, the, the cuboidal cells of the eccrine duct become kind of keratinocyte looking like the, epi, like the epidermis looks, we call that sur squamous syringometaplasia if you want to get fancy. It's a phenomenon that happens anytime the eccrine ducts get really irritated. 
um, and, and kind of traumatized, they react by becoming more squamoid and the cells proliferate and you get like a thickening of the duct lining. So instead of it being a double layer cuboidal, it can become many layers and it tends to get more glassy and, and um, keratinocyte appearing, okay? So one place where you see a squamous syringa metaplasia is like at a biopsy site. That's a great place to learn it. You see an excision of, say, a, of a basal cell or a melanoma or something that had a previous biopsy. Go look right under where the shave biopsy was, and you'll sometimes see eccrine ducts trying to regrow into the biopsy scar, and you'll see this kind of reactive change. And in a in the setting of a squamous cell carcinoma excision, I've seen people sometimes misdiagnose little islands of these where they can't see them connect to the top. Like if they just saw a little island, they'll think it's actually residual cancer, but it's not. See like right there, the key there is finding the lumen of the duct. But there's a mitosis, you know, you could get kind of concerned. Um, and here there's dying keratinocytes also. So the way to put all this together, and even though, oh, here's better. Look at the atypia here. Atypia like a actinic keratosis, but it's kind of like, it's weird. It's patchy, right? It's like, Here's not too much. And then here you got these big giant keratinocytes that are jumbled together and then kind of back to a little bit of disorganized. It's, it's almost a little bit too vague and disorganized to be good for a real AK. So this is a patient who is on chemotherapy. This is not the most dramatic example, but it's a good example, I think, of chemo effects. So what we call this phenomenon here is epidermal dismaturation. And it, it has a lot of overlap, I think, with the way actinic keratosis looks. You get the atypia like you have in an AK, but it's a little bit more jumbled and patchy and disorganized. The problem is, of course, when there's sun damage, some of this probably is due to background actinic damage, and some of it's probably related to the chemo. The, clear, the thing that helped me here is I did know the clinical history of the patient and also the fact that their ducts are all unhappy. So the reason the ducts are unhappy is that the chemo, some types of chemo, are excreted in the sweat right? And so whenever I see syringometaplasia in the setting of a, of a eruption type process, I think I can think about chemo and I can also think about other drugs because there's a wide variety of other drugs and medications that can be um, excreted in the, the uh, sweat. And, and then as it comes up through the duct, it may cause a reactive change in the duct epithelium. So I try to keep that in mind when I see weird changes in the eccrine ducts. And so if I, I cannot remember what the agent was this patient had, and I want to say that they actually received uh, chemo as like induction uh, therapy for a bone marrow transplant. Um, and that, that explains also why they had wiped out platelets because all of their counts were low. So they had hemorrhage in the dermis, petechial hemorrhage that was due to the thrombocytopenia. And then they had the, the background side effect of, of uh, the chemotherapy. So here, I think also that the, the changes in the epidermis and the sweat duct were not actually what was causing the clinical process. These were just background effects of the chemo that were there. Um, what they were actually after was, why is the blood there? Does this patient have vasculitis? And the answer is no, they just had low platelets. But we also had a nice view at what chemotherapy can do um, when it irritates the, um, the epidermis and associated structures. So one example of chemotherapy uh, associated um, epidermal dismaturation and sweat duct squamous syringa metaplasia, as well as petechia from thrombocytopenia. So a little bit more of a, of a kind of a puzzle and mystery on that one with a, a lot of little pieces to the puzzle. Any questions? Nothing. All right, great.